actually see some of you guys. Uh, <laughs> today, uh, Bill will be reading the bulletin for us because uh, this side of my eye is very blurry. And as you can see, it's on black and blue, and um, a blood vessel burst in my eye. And so it makes it very blurry. So I asked Bill to uh, help me with the bulletin. So he will do the bulletin, and I'll do some.
God calls us to worship. And then we come. Some with laughter and songs of joy. God calls us to worship. And we come. Some from a sense of obligations or habit. God calls us to worship. And we come. Some with hearts heavy with grief. God calls us to worship. And we come. Some with distraction or exhaustion. God calls us to worship. And we come. Some with eagerness and enthusiasm. God calls us to worship. And we come. Some with stress, loneliness, or depression. As God's dearly loved children, we bring all our joy and pain, hurt and hope. Into this place of spirit giving grace, love, and hope. Father, we are sorry for the many times we have left you and chosen to satisfy our own selfish desires. For the times we have hurt the members of our families by refusing to do our share of the family tasks. Father, we sin, forgive us. For the times we were unkind and impatient with those who needed our time and concern. Father, we have sinned, forgive us. For the times we were too weak to stand up for what was right and allowed others to suffer because of our cowardice. Father, we have sinned. Forgive us. For the times we refuse to forgive others. Father, we have sinned. Forgive us. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with one another.
of their sins and the sins of their ancestors, they appeal to God to remember the covenant, to show forth God's power, and to heal their land by sending life-giving rain. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in the land, like a traveler turning aside for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. Thus says the Lord concerning this people. Truly they have loved to wander, they have not restrained their feet. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. Have you completely rejected Judah? Does your heart loathe Zion? Why have you struck us down so that there is no healing for us? We look for peace, but find no good, for a time of healing, but there is terror instead. We acknowledge our wickedness, O Lord, the iniquity of our ancestors, for we have sinned against you. Do not spurn us for your name's sake. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember and do not break your covenant with us. Can any idols of the nations bring rain? Or can the heavens 
give showers? Is it not you, O Lord our God? We set our hope on you, for it is you who do all this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 84. We will read it responsibly. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young by the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Timothy. The conclusion of this letter to a young minister offers a final perspective on life from one who faced death. Though others let him down, Paul was sure of his faith in the Lord, who stood by him and lent him strength. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. <clears throat> At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, 
but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thanks to you. Because I don't do 
certain things. As a matter of fact, I go to church every Sunday. I make sure the hundred dollars and the offering plate every Sunday. Those who got it. <laughs> uh, I, I, I sing in the choir. I, I'm on committees. I, I know I got my spot in heaven because I do all the things I need to do to walk with God. You see, folks, when we think that it's all about us and what we do in order to walk with God, we tend to forget about the grace that he has. We tend to push the forgiveness aside. We tend to start dividing ourselves, saying as the Pharisee, here I am better than a tax collector. Here I am better than someone else. In all respect, you are doing exactly the same thing you think is possible. Because what the Pharisees tend to forget, he didn't come with a humble heart. He didn't come with a heart that says, I am a sinner. He came with a heart that said, look at me and look what I have done. Rather than look at God and look what God has done for this sinner that doesn't deserve anything. I don't deserve to get up. I don't deserve to breathe. I don't deserve anything. But God loves us so much that he looks through our sinfulness and still gives us love. So he did you more.
did not do. We ask God to help us walk humbly with him and walk humbly and in justice with our neighbor. You see, all through scripture, you will see, especially those who want the biblical or the Bible challenge, you will see, especially in the, uh, in the prophets, God saying to the people, I don't want to hear your prayers. I don't want to hear, I don't want to smell any type of sacrifice that you're doing. Why? Because you keep raping the weak. You stomp on the poor. Your heart is not for the marginalized. You do things for yourself and you only do these rituals to make yourself look good. So I don't want anything from you. If you want to give me something, then I'm going to need a heart of justice and love and mercy and forgiveness. I'm going to need you to come and walk humbly with me. Because when we exalt ourselves, I'll tell you this one story, and I'll end with this. Sometimes your past may have a big head, okay? I'll be honest. Even though I have a big head physically, sometimes I get, you know, I get ahead of myself. Okay? I think all the gifts and the things I can do, sometimes I tend to forget that it is God that has given me these gifts. And sometimes I leave a reminder. And it's something about when a parent is able to still correct you as an adult with wisdom of faith. So then one day, I came downstairs and I said, Mom, look what I've done this summer. I got my ticket in the morning for a month. I worked all these jobs to do it. I got my laptop for this. I did all this. Da, 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 da. And I'm happy that I'm doing all this stuff. And I got all this stuff. Because I worked hard for it. I worked two jobs. I was burning down Arby's. I will tell you this is a long story. All I got to say, they didn't fire me because I made them laugh. But my mom looked up at the end of the table and said, I hear all this, and I know you are capable to do anything you put your mind to, but I've not heard you thank God first. I have not heard you thank God that he has done this for you, even though you have a high horse of your blood. Thank God for this. See, when we humble ourselves, brothers and sisters in Christ, when we truly humble ourselves, we start to recognize who we are as humanity and who we are as God's children and how we ought to walk in this thing we call Christianity. When we humble ourselves, we start to see that God has woven humanity together to be one. Yes, we have all different cultures, but we can all learn from each other. There's some good food that comes from Italy, and there's some good food that comes from God. It's true. We all be nourished. It may be different. But it serves a purpose. Humanity's hungry. We all have to eat. But to recognize and be humble in God's creation, we start seeing God look more than ourselves. When we exalt ourselves, then that means that we are stepping upon someone else so we may feel up there. And we start to think we're up there. God comes down and says, I don't think so. You ever see the Christmas story? And the uh, he said, push the tent down by the he put the tent down by the uh, the sliding board. He kept coming on the sliding board and got up and did it. Okay. Later what I'm saying is, when we think we get up there, God comes and says, No. 
I need you to be humble. I don't need you to be so earth heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Yes, you do the rituals, you do these things, you go to church, you do all these things. You do it because you're a sinner and you're seeking for my mercy. And that's it. Not because you're a good person, but you come every Sunday. You come to lay your burdens down. You come to fellowship. Not to say, look what I've done. You come to say, look what God has done. And continues to do for us. Yet we are sinners. So humble yourself. I you can see what my mom said to me that day. Humble yourself before God humbles you. Because if you don't humble yourself and God humbles you, there's nothing on this world that can help you. It taught me something that day. To recognize that the reason why I was able to do all those things is because the Lord still gave me breath. He still gave me strength. He still gave me a sound mind, a sound body. He gave all those things to me. And all he asks us to do is to be humble and love as he loves.
our beliefs using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. God of mercy, you are in the midst of us and we are called by your name. Inspire your church to serve and love all people with the unceasing grace you extend to us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all creation, you formed a world where even the sparrow finds a home. Preserve the beauty and diversity of all creatures with whom we share the earth. Lead us to protect all living things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, you are an ever-present help in time of trouble. Rescue families and nations torn apart by violence and warfare. Unite all people toward common goals of reconciliation and peace for every person. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of hope, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anger, anxiety or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of restoration, you call us to trust in you and not ourselves alone. Make this congregation a community of humility and repentance, ready to encounter you in love and follow in your ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. At this time, you are welcome to offer your prayer concerns and joys, either aloud or silently. Be with the Myers family as Jamie enters hospice this week. Bryce Verandio, recovering from a heart attack. We pray for Pastor Woody that she may recover from the eye issue she has, recover from the surgery, and that her vision will be restored to its former state. God of eternal life, to you be the glory forever. We give your thanks for all who have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and now live with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen prayer for the offering today. Gracious God, in your, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. May you these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ who sets a table for all. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Thank you.